on this spot. I'm Stella Bangura and I'm at the home of my guest, who is one of three women in the world to be elected president of their National Football Association. Nasha is the owner and CEO of Sierra Leone National League Club, FC UNC. Well, I'm sure you know who that is, Aja UNC, so let's go. Yep. Hey, Hello. hi, sweetie. Good hey. Afternoon. Hello, how are you? Lovely to see you. Yes. Always looking so gorgeous, <laughs> and Stella. You look amazing. Uh, it's great to be come here. In, come Thank in. you. So, how are you today? Tired, anxious. Uh, hold on. Is this Ronaldo? Yep, that's a good old Ronaldo Cristiano CR7. Mm. And, um, well, I guess when uh, Ronaldo takes a uh, a selfie with you, you. It means you are very you, you can. very important. Or you blended, yes. <laughs> that was at the FIFA best. Okay, and this, what year was this? This was uh, for the 2017. Okay. Okay. And, and that, that's, that's your son there. When he that's, was a baby? That's Malik. Okay. Love of my life. Actually, that's a massive baby. He was, um, how old was Malik there? He was, uh, that's a two month old baby. Okay. And um, he, yeah, he's the love of my life. He's 22 now. That's your husband. That's, that's Arnie. That's um, wedding. Wedding. Yes. Yeah, so how, how was it for you? Uh, the wedding? Yes, and the whole you know, amazing. family. Amazing, amazing time. And uh, like I guess for, for all um, women, it's uh, the best and the happiest moment of your life, really, isn't it? And um, so it was a great time. I really enjoyed that and uh, had a horse and carriage. I wanted to be the princess. Yes, it was, it was really very fairy tale -y yes. kind of wedding. Yeah. You know, you came with a carriage. Yes. And I wanted two white horses, but uh, couldn't get, I think one of them died <laughs> before coming here. So I had to make do with one white and one brown mm. uh, horse. But um, yes, it was a lovely moment, the carriage bit. and. Um, yeah. I think it was. I think it was. It, it kind of felt like um, a princess, um, you know, well, Princess um, Merkel and um, what's the other one's name? Harry. Oh yeah. Yeah. Felt, felt like a kind of royal wedding. I, I. It was a different wedding, and I. I like things differently, done differently, and um, special moment. Great memories. Okay. Really. Okay, so I see other pictures here as well, and then that's um, Seth Blatter. Good old Uncle Seth Blatter. Yes, and this was. Um, just after I had been elected um, female uh, Sierra Leone FA president, and okay. this was in the House of Zurich. This was a month after, okay. and he had some great, great stories to tell. You know, I didn't know that he'd been to Sierra Leone incognito, really? of course, um, many years back. And okay. um, uh, yes, that was um, that was a very interesting moment. Okay, mm. and then that, that's David Cameron there. Yes, again, uh, 2016. I'm, I'm not so good with dates, you know, and I'm not so sure when I said 2017, maybe I meant 2018. Uh, 2017, yes, for the FIFA. But um, this was in 2016, and um, this was in uh, Downing Street, and I was um, personally invited by David Cameron to um, speak at the anti-corruption um, summit in the UK. And it was the first summit of its kind, and um, the only and one clearly, from Sierra Leone. Must have been the only in there. The only Sierra Leonean okay. uh, that was invited, and there was um, Merkel was there, the IMF boss was there. I think the only two presidents that weren't there or prime ministers was Obama wasn't there and Putin wasn't there, but everybody else. It was the first or the the premier. So that was a very very interesting moment and a very nerve wracking moment for me, but um, a memorable time. Yes. Okay. That's wonderful. I have a boy, mm. he's my boy, and he's a well-known FC Johansson player, okay. George Kweku Davis. Okay. They call him Kweku. Uh, and um, we just won the, um, we were just champions of the um, Swiss Youth Cup in 2011, I believe. So Manchester City, Liverpool, Chelsea, they were all clamoring over. So anyway, so we got to, he went to Manchester City for trials and Mancini was over the moon. He fell in love with uh, Quickle. So he gave me his signed um, jersey. Okay. That was his own then. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then that's a, that's a, that's a book. Who, whose book is that? 
as Didier, good old Drogba, uh, 2010 World Cup. These were the boots that he wore uh, then. He actually gave me the pair of boots, signed, but I auctioned one of them. Okay. Um, I did, um, there was a, a fundraising function that I did for the African International Youth Tournament. And, um, so, oh yes, uh, I think I remember, remember that, that event. I remember that event. So, so yes, uh, Mr. Jamel Shalop bought one pair and I stuck onto the other. There was no way I, I couldn't, I, I could not bear to part with both. <laughs> so even one. though we needed the money, I stuck to the, the one pair. So that's Didier's boots there. Well, you have a really lovely, Thank really you. lovely home, Thank I must you. say. Thanks. Really very humbly. So. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so. Well, well, I see huh. some trophies here. Which, which, which are they? This is from where? Well, all of these, this, this is the home of FC Johansson. Uh, really, so um, I think, um, in fact, I know they all span from 2008 mm -hmm. when I started to travel with the boys and okay. participating in um, the Mitz Northern Youth Cup and we um, silver medalists mm -hmm. and then uh, gold medalists okay. and um, participation and, uh, you know, best, best uh, youth player or player of the match and, of course, this major massive uh, this thing that massive. you see this here. International this, Swiss. Well, this is cup. a Swiss uh, cup, and I think this is what really just um, uh, projected FC Johansson into um, on the international platform, really, when um, uh, we were spotted by Manchester City and Chelsea and um, Liverpool, and, and our players started going there. So this was a big major cup, and, um, and most of these other ones that you see here, they were won by George Davis okay. um, for being a player of the tournament and best fair play um, player. So great moments, but all of these, um, like I said, these are the FC Johansson accolades that um, we, we've been able to, to get. Yeah. Again, uh, this is all symbolic of those years. This um, is a Real Madrid um, jersey. This was uh, Casillas, is, um, the, the goalkeeper. Uh, for Real Madrid and I know it's faded because by the time I wanted to start preserving it it had started but if you look closely yes, this is in the year of the Ramos, Diara, um, that era 2009-2009 Real Madrid crew they gave us that young lovely Jabi. brilliant young boy Khalifa Jabi um, a, a young player that is very close to my heart and um, this was when um, I accompanied him to a, um, a, a talent spotting um, a tournament in, in Ghana. And then after that, he was spotted and he went to Denmark. Uh, so, and of course, good old Essien. Well, listen, I'm, I'm Chelsea through and through. <laughs> okay. So, every and anything. And I'm Arsenal. This is I'm well, yeah, not, not bad. That's kind of like my second one, but <laughs> my goodness, uh, it's not a club for the faint hearted, put it that way. Yes. So. You've got a weak heart, it's not the club to be. So true. So that's Michael Essien's um, sign when he was, um, the, the, again, this is a year, this is probably the greatest highlight years for Chelsea. Okay. Drogba, Essien, Lampard, mm -hmm. Ira, and um, yes, also a very special time with one of my football gurus, um, late Sly Tete. He managed um, Essien and Liberty. So and of course, where... Gian. And um, this is a guy also that is close to my heart and um, my football guru's heart as well. And um, they also played a part in the African International Youth Tournament. William, William number 22. Well, it's, it's, just, it's just got to be Chelsea. I'm sorry if um, <laughs> it's just got to be Chelsea okay. all the way here. William, I, you know, I um, absolutely adore that player. What a, what a player, what a trier. So committed. Um, um, and this again was, I'm really not good with dates, but I think this was, um, yes, it was early last year. I was in London. I can't remember what for, but um, I went to watch a match and it was a, an old footballer, former footballer, Alexei, um, the defender, the Russian guy. And we went there and we were having dinner and um, he told William that I was in the house. Okay. And um, he took off his jersey that he was wearing. <laughs> and uh, it, it was at a time when there was a lot of turmoil with the football world, there is still, but then. And he just wished me good luck and um, he sent and the I special wishes and he sent yes. it up 
upstairs for me. That was a lovely, very personal touch. And I cherish that, yeah. that jersey. Very nice. Big stars, any more jerseys? Which I, I tried to give eye. Okay, well, big stars. Jerseys, no, but Beckham, yes. David Beckham there, great guy, lovely, warm personality. This was in McKinney. He came in as a UNICEF Goodwill ambassador, and that's him with my boys, FC Johansson. It was absolutely a dream come true for them, and he's wearing yeah. our FC Johansson jersey. And I'm that wearing my really nice. And I'm wearing my Victoria <laughs> Beckham first edition of her brand. Which I must say her is your signature look. Yep, yep, with the jeans. <laughs> Oh, that was really, really yeah. beautiful. Lovely. Really, really beautiful. Come What's in, make yourself at home. Thank you. This is Thank home you. for you. Thanks so much for having us in your home. And um, it's great to have on the spot, putting you on the spot. And... Um, Basically, your name precedes you globally, and um, unfortunately, not everyone knows very much about you or you know what you do. So, just take us briefly on who is Aisha Johansson. Uh, thanks, Stella, and you're most welcome. I'm very happy to have you in my home, in my space. Um, who is Aisha Johansson? I, I guess that's anybody's guess, really. You know, um, I, I hear now, and you know, talking to you and to other people that you know people have, um, you know, their perceptions about who I am and who I may not be. But you know, that that that's what it is, I guess. Um, I'm just a Sierra Leonean woman who's uh, forever chasing the dream, um, always wanting to. Uh, break the barriers and um, face challenges, I guess. But most importantly, I consider myself now more than ever as a, one of these, and not just being a woman, just one of these African uh, uh, personalities who wants to put their country, their continent on the platform for the right reasons. And, you know, whatever it is they believe that we can't do, we try and we prove them wrong that we can do. Um, so I guess that has earned me um, a lot of controversy, good, bad or ugly, whatever, depends on how you look at it. Um, so I'm just enjoying doing what I do, chasing the dream and chasing the dream with others, especially the youth, be you um, boy, girl, <laughs> maybe animal, you know, <laughs> boy, girl, um, man, woman, and we chase the dream. And, um, and that's what it is, I guess. So, you know, a lot of people know me for, whether it's in the media, entertainment, uh, football, most importantly, football, that's the global image. And um, that's what people know me for, yes. but there's so many now, other things. Now, before, now, of course, you've, you've rightly said it, a lot of people know you for your rise in the world of football, but there are quite a number of things people do not know. You've just mentioned some in the media, in the entertainment, and, you know, it's amazing that you are the first um, female publisher in Sierra Leone. Not a lot of people know that. So how, how did you get into that? Um, again, it was uh, one of these things, you know, dare if you can. And we're, we're talking now, we're going way back to uh, 1993. Um, I had a magazine called Rapture Magazine, which was a social magazine. But prior to 1993, um, as far back as in 1988, 89, I made my first visit to um, America to visit a friend of mine. And that is when I, you know, I, I started to hear about this woman called Oprah Winfrey. She had this show, and this black woman just coming out and she had her talk show. And we're talking 80s now. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this woman's really daring. I like her gutsy, whatever, you know. And it was engaging. I, I'm, I'm not so, I'm very Brit, Brit, British, <laughs> if you like. So, you know, to be very Englishy mm -hmm. and to subscribe or tap into the very all American, and she's very, very American. But I found her very engaging and refreshing. I liked her vibe. And um, I think she had started promoting a magazine called O. 
um, um, she had a publication. So they told me about who this woman was and I started to, to watch her, her movies. And then I think um, just after the NPRC regime, I think they came, that there was in 1992. And then after that, I, I made a trip again to my same girlfriend and I started to, and, and everybody, of course, we all know, you were probably too young. Then there was a lull, there was a break. And um, I watched her program and I watched this, you know, this O that was coming out. And then I started to tap into a magazine called Vanity Fair. I liked the stories that they did. So it wasn't all about glamorous girls looking all pretty with clothes. There was investigative stories. If they, if they did two articles, it was deep investigations. And, and I liked that. And so I thought, you know, why can't I do something like this in Sierra Leone? Why not? You know, what stops us? I don't have the money. I didn't have a cent then. And I said, but, but I can start something like that. I had friends. I had a friend, um, a Lebanese guy who is now pretty successful in Nigeria. And he had a printing press, Heidelberg printing press. So his name is um, Basum, Majed. As soon. So I came back. The long and short, I came back. And I said, look, I'm going to do this. I want to do a publication. There's too much doom and gloom stories. We're killing ourselves. We've got a coup d'etat. Young military boys. They don't know anything, how to run a country, but they're running riots in the country. So why don't I do a magazine? Let's just, you know. So that's how I started. And I came out. My first publication was about transvestites in Sierra Leone because I wanted oh, to shock. Hey. Uh, I, I needed, <laughs> I, I needed the attention. So, and, and we did that. And I had all these gay friends that were coming out. And those, so that's how it was. It was Rapture magazine. It came out and um, we had a couple of editions and then it was a full blown out war. We had to run and leave. And then I, and, and then the story goes on. I relaunched again in, as a glossy magazine and I had Muhammad Ali agree to do the front cover issue for me. Wow. So I had a rare exclusive interview with Muhammad Ali and I had people like Iman, the Somalian model. Wow. She did an interview with me. So I was able to get onto an international um, level with that. And um, Yaya Jame, that was my first meeting with him. I dared to do a story. He didn't give me an interview, but I did a story. And so as a refugee, I dared to do that and he was considered to be a tyrant. I ran a story, which wasn't negative. I just got pictures about him and stories about him, and I got his attention. And uh, we became really good friends, you know, So, because he was like, who's this woman who dares to? So, so that was how it was. And unfortunately, our story in Sierra Leone, the war escalated. There was the NPRC era, and then after that, of course, we all know the stories, and then came yeah. the full-blown civil war and lost a couple of workers, and then I had to just um, recline, go back to England and uh, settle in, in, in the Gambia. But you know media, publications, yeah. it's a lot of money and it's advertising. Yes. And I had a high glossy, high-end, full-color magazine that I did it in German as well for Lufthansa Airlines. I just couldn't keep up. So, with the so, cost. so looking, looking at looking at it, do you think it's something you may want to reconsider, um, you know, delving back into? Because clearly, it was a success. No, not 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 really. It's it's um it's a very aggressive market now, and it's something I've got my hands in quite a lot of things. Uh, you know, now I'm more into philanthropy, stroke, the football stroke. What I'm into now. Um, and all of these things can be incorporated into the media. You know, doing what I'm doing with you now is media and we support each other. So I feel very strongly connected back into those media entertainment days. So I don't need to do a separate, separate uh, something. One. No, I don't think so. Okay. Now, just as you've mentioned, um, you know, you delve in now or doing philanthropic work. Um, a few years back, you started a charity, a breast cancer charity called, called the Pink Charity Fund. Yeah. Um, what really inspired you? I mean, they could you could have done something else. You could have done HIV. You could have done, um, you know, you could have picked something but you were very specific, breast cancer. What's the story behind that? Well, I lost three girlfriends in one year, um, one after the other, actually. Like, you know, After three months, there was one 
dead and the other and the other and the other and it was just it, it was just a, a crazy crazy time and you know as 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 women and and we're all prone to that uh, it's not ignorance it's just being not paying attention to ourselves you know we're we're so in engrossed in other things happening around us especially when you're growing up you're young you know you're, you're, you're chasing after this you're chasing after this you forget to be in tune with yourself and if it hasn't happened to you or somebody close to you god forbid you don't really care so um like i said i i there's a girlfriend of mine at boarding school and she died and and just as a, of what a, a lump a lump where you know and this is a woman me asking a lump where what do you mean a lump breast cancer where how uh well she died within a month of being diagnosed and she was i think she's probably about 30 then and um then another friend of mine uh died like four months and then another girlfriend of, of mine the sister um randa's sister muna uh, died and uh, it was just too much really and i found myself in that year everybody was wailing crying we'd lost sisters you know in a year to the same disease and so i i i thought and then i i really wasn't actively doing anything that engaged me but i was here and i'd met my husband and we hadn't we hadn't even been married then and um i think he wanted to lock me up in this house doing nothing i was like hell no <laughs> so um I thought, look, let me, let me um, do something with regards to uh, raising awareness. So when we started to talk about this and people say, hey, but this thing else really killed Boko people. You know, the women are dying, but people don't know. And I'm like, how do they? Yeah, but they don't know. Uh, and, and then I, I heard of another woman who she thought she had a boil. And so the lump was there. The lump was actually not just was it hidden and she had lumps showing from the outside. And she thought she had a, a boil and she was there slicing it and trying Ooh. to. So obviously the cancer grew out of the breast. So that for me was alarming. And that was how it all started. And I thought I'm going to get in on a campaign for awareness. And uh, my girlfriend, Genevieve, um, the Nigerian actress, actress. Um, she was very supportive and um, she came and she helped me and we just did an awareness campaign just like that and um, my husband and I we brought in a mammogram machine um, to help poor women uneducated women who have no idea to um, screen free uh, we brought that to the Connaught Hospital um, they didn't quite know how to somewhere along the line they it was handled badly so we brought in another one a second one which is at the Well Woman's Clinic now. And I got Madame Johnson Sirleaf. I wrote to her without even meeting her. And I got um, the former president, um, Tijan Kaba, to ask her kindly if she would be my lifetime honorary patron. And she was like, yes, you know. And so, so she sent down half her cabinet here. And um, she supported me with some money for an ultrasound. So we've got the ultrasound and the machine at the Well Woman's Clinic and um, supporting women with no income or very little income because it starts from detection. Yes. That's where it all starts, yes. you know. Now, how it goes now with the further treatment, advanced treatment is another thing. But the most important thing is being aware yes. and detecting it. So detecting and then, of course, early. most women will say, well, we have no money, how we go. But there is there is a machine there that can do that free for you. So that's how that came about. And I did something called the pink ball and everybody had to wear a shade of pink. Pink can be red, purple, mm -hmm. fuchsia, mm -hmm. pink, pink. Everybody wore pink. I got bank managers and ministers and everybody to go on the cat's walk. It's just a fun thing at the country lodge uh, to raise money. Wow. Um, so that was that, and I did that, and I shelved it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you that. shelved it. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, you um, just mentioned Erlin Johnson, so that's the former president of Liberia. Great but we're going to talk a little bit about that, and um, a little bit more about probably your background, because you seem like a very strong woman, and um, we want to know a little bit about that. But we'll take a quick break, and we'll be back. Who knows what might happen tomorrow, next week, or even next year? 
But we do know that with Stacco Insurance, whatever the future brings, we'll be there when you need us most. With outstanding customer service and prompt payment of your claim. Fire, motor, general accident, marine, life and medical. For now and for tomorrow. Stacco Insurance. A passion for high standards. Welcome back on the show. I'm speaking to a phenomenal woman who keeps breaking new barriers, and that's none other than Aisha Johansson. All right, before we took the break, you mentioned about Erlin Johnson Sirleaf, and now that brings us brings us another area or another part where, well, in your life, where um, you had an award, a prestigious award, Women of Excellence Award, and coincidentally you had awarded Ellen Johnson Sirleaf way before she even became president. So what really got you into um, recognizing other women around Africa? Um, well, yeah, that, again, like I said, you, my, my um, humanitarian, philanthropic um, ventures were born out of um, all the things that I saw happening um, just before and after, especially after the war in Sierra Leone. So um, with the women of excellence, we all know that, you know, women, children, uh, with every major disaster in a country, you know, they're the most vulnerable and they suffer the most. And then we heard all these stories about, you know, women being raped and um, uh, 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 having to pick up the pieces again and uh, displaced kids. So I, I, I thought to myself that, you know, but what about all these women, the unsung heroes, uh, the heroines actually in, in, in this um, aspect that, what about these women that you hear that are stuck now with eight kids, six ki kids, uh, fathers being shot dead, um, mothers being raped, and you know, the, the whole place was in disarray. You, you, you know what was happening. I said, why don't we honor some of these women, together with the women, women like us that people don't know about in the background, people in engineering, people, uh, women in the, the military, uh, women who are doing great things, but men and people in general just don't pay any attention or they don't know about. So that's uh, how that came about, celebrating, honoring, and recognizing women um, that have achieved greatly. Amazing. And again, the emphasis is not on highly educated women. The emphasis was not on um, affluent women. Um, the emphasis was really on women, superhero women, you know, that Amazing. actually they dusted themselves down and they just got on with things. So that's how it was born out. And then, of course, we had the exceptional women in the region, like Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, who we'd we'd been following and hearing about as a strong, politically willed woman who'd gone through her own massive challenges. And we had a pool of um, uh, judges then, and um, we voted for her. So mm -hmm. in actual fact, we in Sierra Leone, we actually recognized and started to honor her as Way being before. a woman to look out for in the future, even before the Liberians. <laughs> actually recognize and hail her so, so, so looking looking at you now and um, where you started from you know from media is it from publishing to owning um, a magazine to um, a charity foundation to even awarding women somehow football came into play and they're also unrelated so how did it really start for you your journey into football Football was always there, you know. I was born, it's in my DNA. Um, even from the age of five, my father used to take me to the stadium, football matches, and he'd put me on his lap and I'd be going, because I grew up with, with brothers and my brother's friends. Um, I hated dresses, I've never had a doll <laughs> in my life. Never had a doll, never had a teddy bear, never done all the girly things. And I'm not even ashamed to say that, it is what it is. Is that probably one of the reasons why you're a very strong 
it, looking back, well, because I had to fight off the bullying from my, <laughs> my brothers because they would say, no, you can't. And I'm like, yes, I will. And yes, I can. Perhaps, yes. Um, I, I um, get on a lot better with men because I grew up with men and, and their brothers. My brother's friends were my brothers. We all mm. grew up. I played football with my brother. I, I did not have girlfriends to play with um, or play around with. It, it wasn't like that. And I wasn't complaining. It, it was what it was. My father taught me my table tennis, everything that I, my sports, the athletics, everything. I did it with the guys. So it's not something that I tried to get into. It's something that was born into me. Uh, my father was also the uh, chairman of Eastern Lions. And um, he was, he's probably one of the, or probably the, the eldest elder of Eastern Lions right now. So all of that, the players coming home with the cup or failing to come with the cup or dressing up at home, I, I sapped in all of that. That was all part of me as a young girl. Did you ever, did you ever envision that one day you would have your own never, football club? Never, never. Honestly, it was never something that, you know, I, I, like I said, it was an inbuilt. Looking back, I realized that all those emotions and everything, I am my father's daughter. And I guess you don't have to be a man to take over after your father. Yeah. It, this you know, proves yes. that. So all of this, um, I, I now realize that um, I sapped it all in and it's a natural born instinct um, um, thing for me to pursue. So all of these ventures that I've been doing, uh, the football was always there. So how, how then did the FC Johansson start. club start? Up the road, when you're going home, you will see there's um, on the left, you'll see a small 20 meter, 25 meter patch. And again, like with most of my ventures after the war, and a lot of these boys were displaced, some of them were orphans, and um, they were running around sleeping rough. And I would be coming to see my husband, and you know, seven o'clock in the morning, they're there playing. Two o'clock in the afternoon, they're there playing. Six in the evening, they're playing. 10 o'clock at night, they're playing. And, you know, it just dawned on me that these kids, it's one of two things, they, they're homeless or something is deeply wrong in the home. They have no parental care. So again, to cut a long story short, that's how it happened. And um, I would stop by and I would talk to them. And then they had a boy, a manager who was, uh, he was working for the church. There's an evangelist church up the road. And they sent me a letter saying that they wanted support. And um, I said, I will support. It's not a problem. I've been dying to support you guys, but you need to go back to school because you're not in school. And some of you guys don't even have homes or your parents don't care. So that's how it started. Some of them didn't have parents. Their parents were killed. It's as simple as that. And the others had uh, fathers who were junta. And so it was all a very dysfunctional uh, setting. But I managed to combine that if you go back to school, I'll support the school and I'll support the, the football, but we have to. And um, uh, it took them a long time to believe that I was Sierra Leone and they say, hey, this American man, <laughs> this uh, too, we can't chop this American. I'm like, you got something else going. <laughs> I'm so Sierra Leone and I know Sadi So anyway, um, so put them back in school, a lot of them to the, the services and around, and I would actually turn up at school. To check and, on them? Yep, I'd sit at the back and just, not because I wanted two things, I realized these, boys, they weren't really interested in academics, but I just needed to keep them out of trouble. And I just was not comfortable seeing them from early morning to dead at night, loitering. So it was just, we did that balance and it was an amazing, amazing, incredible journey from getting that packed, putting them into community leagues under 10s, under 11s, and starting to take them around the world. And they have won series of awards they've, they've done amazing. pretty well mm. it's amazing what you've done with the club and the fact that the, it's probably one of the um best branded clubs in Sierra Leone well known as well um out of Sierra Leone are there any plans future plans to um expand FC Johansson 
um, or you know, expanding to other territories or franchise or merchandise? You know, what's the future for FC Johansson? I think maybe one of my biggest, the, the, the biggest, not regrets, but the biggest sadness with the FC Johansson story, and we call it the field of dreams, is that um, I wasn't able to be there as the mother wholly, wholly, 100% for them because I became president of the Australian Football Association. Once that happens, you become a mother for national, national football, the football. nation's football. And I probably didn't think it through that much then, and I didn't think it would be so all-consuming to divert yourself, to divorce yourself as a mother, to tear yourself away from your children. You are the first woman to serve in FIFA's Security and Integrity Committee. Um, you were appointed as head of the Confederation of African Football, that's CAF, um, Women's Football Committee, making you the first Serial Union to ever head such a committee in the organization's 60 years of, of existence. That did not come easy. Um, you know, looking and, and thinking of the controversy, the contention, the infighting within the SLFA. For you, what does this mean for you and what impact has it had on you? I think first and foremost, what does it mean for Sir Leon? Forget about me. You know, when we do things like these, we don't think of self. We think of nation. Well, for me, anyway, I'm driven by that, putting Sir Leon first. Uh, Sierra Leone has a history of doom and gloom stories internationally, you know, whether we want to accept it or not. That's what we represent. If we're not cutting limbs with child soldiers or corruption or what have you. So a story like this, where you're the first and you're internationally recognized, I think it's for Sierra Leone and I think we should run with that. So I'm proud for Sierra Leone. I'm really happy. Of course, for me, it's a legacy for my child, for my family that they treasure. Um, but nobody's benefiting really out of it. I think Sierra Leone should benefit and will benefit as we go down the line for that. Um, so, um, and, and, and for me, it makes me um, believe that yes, we do have women in our midst like myself that can, can push the barriers and we, I think you're doing a great job. I Thank see um, other women behind the cameras here. I love it when I see our women folk doing things that, you know, a couple of decades ago, years ago, even recent years ago, we didn't imagine it would be possible to do. So I'm loving every minute of seeing women making these strides. So, um, and for me, it's, um, it can only get bigger and higher. Of course, the challenge is a controversy. Success does not come without controversy. No, it's, it's just not gonna happen. Um, uh, you have to fight for the betterment and good things in life, unfortunately. Um, one would think that um, in order to achieve greatness or for good things to come to a nation or to people, it's a very simple thing to say, you preach it and it happens. Do you, do you but think it doesn't... because of the fact that you are a woman, a lot of those challenges came your way? Well, I never wanted to accept that and I never subscribed to the gender victim um, uh, theory that, oh gosh, you know, I'm a woman, please do feel sorry for me. No, I'm a fighter and I'm a very strong woman in my beliefs and, you know, uh, I'm not opinionated and even if I am, it isn't with arrogance. Um, it's because it is what it, it is and how things should be. But yes, I think um, slowly over the past year, especially with the successive indictments and conspiracy and the corruption theories and all of that. Um, and you hear the pronouncements of some people. Udat Nadis Uman, which is Sabipa football, why for dinner football, Udat they go take orders from Uman. When they actually come out and they pronounce, they make these pronouncements that why a woman, why should I take orders from a woman? And who is this woman in football to tell us what to do? Then it sinks in and then you have no choice but to know and accept that, well, it's, it's, a, it's a gender thing. It's because she's a woman. But I, I've said this over and over again that I believe that the stance that I've taken in trying to create a better, I, listen, football is a dirty business, period. Okay, it's, it's not a clean business. It's a, it's, it's a tough business, be you man or woman. 
And if there was another woman who took the same stance as I am taking, I think he would probably have had an even harder deal than me. In many ways, I think sometimes it's because I'm a woman, they kind of like they throttle back a little bit sometimes. And then it's because I'm a woman, they make it really hard for me. So, you know, it's a bit of a catch-22 that way. So I'm not here to try to feel sorry for myself. I'm a Sierra Leonean who wants to put Sierra Leone on the best level possible. Now, so. as we talk about the dirty um, politics and, and dirtiness of, of football, uh, of course, the African football world right now is, is, is shocked by the death of <coughs> Hussein, who is part of, um, of the, um, you know, the team that uncovered um, allegations of corruption in the Ghanaian football. Um, he's been murdered. What message do you think this really sends out? Um, that Africa um, is still in that barbaric, crude, state of affairs, as much as we try to gloss over issues that we are growing and we are changing. Um, it's very sad, it's very embarrassing. It's extremely disturbing because we all know how journalists can behave and misbehave, not just in Africa, but globally. Um, but in Africa in particular, when it comes to the media and journalists, we all know how very easily they can be compromised. They can compromise the truth and they compromise morales. And something like um, what is going on in football in Africa, if you find those brave enough to come out and say, I'm not going to hide my face. I'm actually going to come and yes, this is me. I am here to expose crime, corruption, and he gets murdered. Well, obviously, it's to frighten off the very few who do subscribe to the bigger picture and they have uh, um, standards and ethics, and they will say what is right. It's to scare them. It's to scare people like us, I guess, who um, make a stance of trying to say, no, we will not subscribe, we want to. When we say dawn of a new era, and when we say change, we mean change. Change not for Aisha, but change for the nation. Change for football for all, and not for Aisha's FA, you know? So it's, it's, it's you know, it's hits all of us because it's a signal, I guess, for all of us who are on this campaign. But um, we're not phased by that. You, you believe or you don't believe. It's as simple and as that, but it's, it's, it's very... Deterred? No, I've never been, you know, honestly, I, I, these things don't, you know, I'm, I know how spiritual you are. I'm not a big, heavy religious person, but <laughs> I do believe that it's scriptured, it's scriptured. you know, okay. and um, yeah. Right. Okay, well, continue to stay with us. We are still here on the spot. We'll be back. Who knows what might happen tomorrow, next week, or even next year? But we do know that with Stacco Insurance, whatever the future brings, we'll be there when you need us most, with outstanding customer service and prompt payment of your claim. Fire, motor, general accident, marine, life and medical. For now and for tomorrow. Stacco Insurance, a passion for high standards. Welcome back. Of course, this is On The Spot and I have here Aisha Johansson. This is an exclusive on Aisha and it is from grass to fragrance. That's a hint of what we're going to be talking about next. Now, Aisha, beyond football, you know, you are a resilient woman. You have the capacity to bounce back anytime, anywhere. And um, you, you have a knack for jumping into new things and somehow making it a success. You've jumped into something new, something um, people would find quite surprising, and that is the Aisha Johansson luxury fragrance. We're talking now, what, 10 years or something, aren't we? Um, uh, something like that. And so, quietly, I started to work on fragrances and scents. It's a lot of money, it's a lot of time. 
And so there were lots of stops and starts. So the two times that I've been set aside or sacked by a, a government that <laughs> <laughs> didn't appoint me, I would just come back into my little corner and, um, and just focus on creating. And this is what, what, what I've done. So basically, um, we have fragrances, uh, candle fragrances. I have a big, big dream, um, the home of Aisha Johansson Luxury, which will be scents, fragrances, lifestyle, you know, teas, a, 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 a lot of great things, which I pray to God I'm, I live long enough to, to see that. But we're starting with this. So um, it's, it's been in the making for many, many years. It's never been spoken about. But today I will launch it. I will launch seven fragrance lines that I've developed, um, working with extracts that are God-given. Okay, uh, again, I love fashion. I love luxury. Um, we all do as women. You go to shops, you hear Saks, you hear Selfridges, Harrods, and we all subscribe to these fragrances. And, and women and men are paying thousands or hundreds and, and it, God knows how much for luxury uh, fragrances. But when you look at the extracts, what's in these? Na lemongrass, na lem, na orange, na popo, na mango. And we have abundance of those and, and it's there. And for me, that was my thinking that, you know, but what if again, again, with the aim, of course I want to make money, but with the aim A of saying that, what if, what if we're able to produce something that's really high end and luxurious? whether Victoria Beckhams and all these people subscribe to that, the Rihanna's, but maybe one or two of those products or properties are coming from Sierra Leone. What if, you know, and what's stopping us from doing that? So I started to work on plants and fruits and extracts, uh, learning about these properties that can go into being part of, because you know, when you're developing fragrances, you've got the ultimate fragrance but maybe there's just 2% of something that gives off the real scent yes. or that is the base for giving the yes. real scent. And maybe that can be basil, thyme, tea bush, a, a nutmeg, lemongrass or something like that. You know, so I started to work on that and I'm really happy to say that I've been able to find a formula uh, that can work. I have a farm. My father, my best friend, thank God he's still alive, he invested a lot in, 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 in agriculture, in farmland, and I've got my own farm, and um, I'm engaging the village now, and I'm putting the women farmers first. Demand them, then we'll support the women there, right? But the women will cultivate the farm. So if we've got a high end product, I want the women to grow my lemongrass. I want the women to plant my lime trees. I want the women to grow. Let the women plow the land. What women can't do physically, we're not going to force them to. Do you know, not to by force. Yeah. If a woman can't do it, she can't do it. But if she can do it, don't deprive her of doing it because she's a woman. Okay, so in that village, because it is my village, it is my land, I will put the women first. And the men will support the women in the village. So. So we've got a product now. I've worked for years, years on this, and um, it's very emotional for me to see that internationally it's been embraced. They love it. The next stage is to see how much of Sierra Leone we're going to put in there. Now I know the lemongrass that we have can go into that. Now I know the lime. Now Asabi say we watermelon. Asabi say we. I know. It's just to really fine tune things. And, you know, again, I'm very open and transparent because it is a project that is close to my heart that some of the proceeds, if you're selling a, a candle for $30 and you put just $2 or $3 of one candle into building a school or schools for the girls in the village or even for adults learning, what does that kill you? So does that's take... the ultimate aim. My story. ultimate aim is the story is from grass to grace from nothing to Harrods, from nothing in Sierra Leone to Saks, okay? That's the story, that's the line. So a little bit of something in there, we put it into building a school, building a clinic, 
a lot of these women, they die poor, uh, maternity, uh, um, what have you. No, no, none of that. So we try to build. It's about giving back. It's a, it's a cycle. And that's what I've always done with the football. I give back to the youth. To, we give back and we should. So it's, for it's those who are in Sierra Leone that would find it interesting um, and may want to purchase, how, how can they, where, where would you be retailing it? In here in I think um, for now, definitely first up um, is Nally's Spa because um, that is kind of like the, the most um, immediate place. You, you, you'd want to go, you know, candles and the spa and what have you. They love it. There are one or two fragrances that they've I marked that they want to. Um, the Country Lodge wants to stock. Radisson has expressed an interest. Atlantic Hotel. But again, when, when you say luxury, luxury is also exclusives. So you can't really just um, have it everywhere. everywhere. Uh, so it doesn't matter if it's just two places or mm -hmm. three places. As long as it's there, if you really want it, you go look for it. Yeah. So um, that's what it is. But I can say at Nally's, they will be the first to be stocking okay. and selling. I, I know, I know. of course, viewers are curious to see what these candles look like. Um, they're here. We're yeah. going to be showing everyone. I hope so. <laughs> um, um, but they are in your Zen room. That's, that's what you call it, is it? Yeah, that's my... Um that's my room, that's my space. Your space. Dogs aren't allowed, <laughs> son's not allowed, my husband's not allowed, nobody's allowed in there, it's just me. That's interesting, <laughs> but today, or rather here on On The Spot, we will be looking a yeah. little bit into that special room. We'll take a break and we'll be back and you're gonna see the fragrance candles. Who knows what might happen tomorrow, next week, or even next year? But we do know that with Stacco Insurance, whatever the future brings, we'll be there when you need us most, with outstanding customer service and prompt payment of your claim. Fire, motor, general accident, marine, life and medical. For now and for tomorrow. Stacco Insurance, a passion for high standards. Same, so mold wine, this. No, sorry. I just, sorry, I think I want to get everything at and this tropical. point. I think yes. it becomes near impossible for people it's, to pick or decide on which fragrance because they do smell beautiful. And so, they smell amazing. And so this evening, what we will try to do is to just position um, the candles at different tables and you just smell one. And what endears to you, endears to you, you know. Um, like I said, it's, uh, it's candles are a personal thing. I will stick with these six fragrances, uh, seven fragrance lines, and we'll take it from there. So I'm thinking, oh, how soon do we get to see um, perfumes? You know, how, how soon do we get, and that's the next thing logically. What will be thinking? I have my, my perfume um, line already developed. I have for women, and it's called Power Play. Mm. And Power Play is after this agenda initiative that I have, giving African women and girls a voice. Um, it was through sports, but it's just to give African women and girls a voice. Um, I'm working a little bit on the men's fragrance, just to fine tune it. Mm. But I've got a ready to go um, women's one called Power Play. I can't do everything at the same time. Yes. So I will launch this now, see how so when, it goes. When, when do we expect probably that one? Well, God willing, let's see how it goes in Easter. Easter. I was hoping Valentine's, I could, for Valentine's Day, I could bring that out. But I don't think, I think it's just too early now and it's just quick. I, I can't logistics-wise and everything. But um, let's see how it goes for Easter. Um, you, you've come so far. It's, it's, been, it's been a long journey for you. It's not been an easy one. There's been, um, I mean, you've gone through so much and someone right now who is watching and probably in the same situation, probably about to give up or have a really ambitious um, dream. What would you say to them? What are the three things you would say to them that has you helped you yeah. come here? You know, you can't give up, you know, I mean, everything that you do in life, it's about how committed you are and how real you are. You know, I gave a talk uh, a couple of months back talking about change 
and you hear politicians talk about change and you hear everybody talk about change but you know I mean change real change what change if you believe that you can make a difference or you can uh, bring about change um, you should never ever give up because no matter what everybody else thinks it's about what you believe in and I think maybe sometimes a, a lot of us we we're just too mindful about what other people are thinking and how we'll be viewed and how people are going to put you down or hound you because you have a genuine belief in change or something and I think that's when we start going wrong um, you are Stella you've come a long way um, and this is why I'm so happy to be giving this interview with you because I know how far you've come because you believed in yourself, you believed in this journey, you believed in this change and you're part of making that change. So um, what can you say except believe in yourself, you're committed to a cause, if it is genuine, if it's a good cause, stand the course and, st and, 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 and have the vision and go with the cause. Uh, that's all I can say and um, yes, it's a challenging country environment but you know no gain no pain no gain as they say right so with the opinion yeah it's all right that's cool thank you very much oh ladies and gentlemen a beautiful beautiful one so far i'm not in yet but i'm about to come in and of course this is the official lunch of the aisha Johansson luxury fragrance brand so let's come in Basically, the reason for the Aisha Hansen fragrance is A, it is about a brand trying to brand a brand. And with all humility, I do believe that I am a brand when I'm being told that all the time that you're a brand, whatever a brand means, or whatever a brand is. So, I've come up with my product, which is for me, that's a brand. And if it means a brand, well, a brand. This is a four-year project. Um, again, I, I don't want to refer back to the football, but I won't hint on that. But the reason why I've been able to get these seven fragrances now is because I've been sacked twice by employees who didn't employ me. But in any case, the, the favorite word set aside, I've been set aside by employees who didn't employ me. So in that setting aside time, I would like to actually focus on doing something that I really, well, really and there's no way I could have done that if I was actively in, in the ball. Thank you, thank you, uh, uh, um, everybody that is here, my old friends that I see, Josie, Sophie, Andrew that I haven't seen for, I say 40 years, you say 30 years, but hey, you know, thank you for being here, Francis and your wife, thank you all, this is a very personal launch, I wanted to thank you all, if I've left anybody out, I hope not, do forgive me. Uh, but last but not least, I have to say my husband, in everything that I do, everything, even if he doesn't agree with it, he's always been my rock and my support. Difficult times, but I want to thank him. My son asked me not to dare to mention his name. He said, oh, you walk out, and he called your name, and you never walk out. Uh, Malik always there for me. He's the reason for everything that I do in life and he's my big, big love. Uh, thank you all my friends, to the girls. I want to thank Zainab. I want to thank you, Zainab. I, I thank you all that's here. Pamusa and this and Everybody who has tapped into this dream. My final words, my guest tonight proves that the road to success is steeper for women. We all must be ready to pay the price of success. That includes hard work, dedication, perseverance, persistence and strong belief in your worth, what you stand for and what you are fighting for. Madam CJ Walker said, I had to make my own living and my own opportunity, but I made it. 
Don't sit down and wait for the opportunities to come. Get up and make them. We all have low periods when we think the challenges and odds against us are overwhelming. Yet, such periods of difficulties are not meant to break us, but build us into becoming the best person we can be and influencing our environment. Thanks to the inspiration of strive and words of groundbreaking women leaders such as Aisha Yuansin, we are guided by the success stories as beacons of light as we weather the storm. We thank Aisha for being on the spot with Stella and wish her all the very best in her ventures. Thanks to you as well for watching, but the show continues online and we'll have, but we'll love to have you join the conversation. Have your say on tonight's discussion by dropping your comments on our Facebook page on the spot with Stella. Well, until next week when we'll be back, stay fabulous.